I am uh, Jamie Shea, Senior Fellow at Friends of Europe, and uh, it's my privilege to serve as moderator for this uh, session. You've all seen the title in the program, What is the Future Purpose of Foreign Policy and Diplomacy in a Changed World? Well, when I read this title, and then my eye ran down the program, I expected, maybe this is my sort of official prejudice for so many years in Brussels, but I expected then to find the name of an illustrious former foreign minister, illustrious uh, former ambassador, somebody from a chancery of an EU or a Western government, because they're the professional diplomats that normally talk about diplomacy, yes? Uh, and so I was pleasantly surprised uh, instead to see on the program not a former ambassador or foreign minister, but the former mayor uh, of a city in Afghanistan. And I'll introduce her in a moment. But then suddenly, you know, Eureka, the, the light went on in my head. It struck me that, of course, diplomacy today in the modern world is about much more than simply the traditional 19th century interplay of, of chanceries with uh, their cables and secret telegrams. Civil society have become, has become a major diplomatic actor as well in, in driving international relations and international relationships uh, forward. Why is it? Well, it's because their civil society is networked globally, uh, increasingly via the new uh, communications and social media. Civil society is vocal. Sometimes, you know, unlike us, we in government, they actually know what they want. Uh, 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 rather than perpetually sort of grappling with uh, intractable uh, options and dilemmas and trying to find a way forward. Civil society is very flexible, very adaptable, very skilled at where to apply pressure uh, to get things done. Uh, they educate by example and by role models, and we certainly have a role model uh, here uh, today. Uh, and they focus on impact rather than on grand strategy papers that will never be implemented and where there are no benchmarks to know if we're successful. They focus on impact uh, on, on the ground. So today when we talk about diplomacy in the modern world, we're going to talk about uh, diplomacy from the grassroots upwards and where ideally, ideally it could constructively meet and interact with the traditional diplomacy uh, going uh, uh, downwards. So I'm delighted today to welcome somebody who, for, for some of us at least, is already a very familiar face, uh, because Mayor Zarifa Ghaffari uh, was our special guest at the President's uh, dinner uh, last night when she was very skillfully interviewed by Cecilia Maelstrom, so I'm already under pressure today to try to do as well in my moderation as Cecilia did last night. Uh, and we heard already from Zafira that she is indeed, Zarifa, excuse me, that she is indeed a very passionate advocate, uh, not only of Afghanistan, of the people of Afghanistan, the role of women in Afghanistan and their human rights, uh, particularly the right to be educated uh, and the right to be employed. Employed, uh, and the right to participate, uh, but a very eloquent human rights advocate uh, for the role of women in, in uh, general. Um, she was the youngest uh, uh, mayor, if I've got it right, of an Afghan city. She became mayor uh, already back in uh, of Maidan, uh, Maidan Shia. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Maidan Shah, back in um, uh, three uh, years ago, at 26. Uh, and she would still be mayor today, uh, not here, but in Afghanistan, continuing to take care of the needs of her population, were it not, of course, for the uh, return of the Taliban to power in Kabul on August uh, the 15th and the collapse, it has to be said, of the 20-year international effort to bring about a different future uh, for Afghanistan uh, and its uh, people. So unfortunately, uh, she was caught up in that maelstrom uh, of chaotic events uh, last uh, August uh, and obliged to depart uh, with her family. Uh, she now uh, is in Dusseldorf in Germany, where of course uh, she has to 
plot her future, but I've no doubt that it's going to be an active future uh, and uh, we will be hearing from her uh, often uh, uh, as uh, life uh, continues. Um, and so today I've asked her to tell us a little bit about how she, as the mayor uh, of a city in Afghanistan, experienced uh, Western diplomacy, international diplomacy over the last uh, 20 years, what lessons uh, she thinks that we all have to learn at a time when uh, all of the NATO countries that were involved in the military operation are going through a very painful lessons learned exercise. You may have seen that the one in Germany uh, kicked off uh, immediately after the election campaign uh, this week, uh, just in case uh, we may be called upon to do another major intervention like Afghanistan uh, in the uh, future. Um, and also to give us the perspective of how the grassroots diplomacy, which if I may say you represent, uh, can perhaps, you know, enable us to do things better in the future. But of course we are where we are, I hate that expression, I really do, but it's the one that everybody's using at the moment as they try to sort of plot a way forward to continue to help the Afghan people, even with the Taliban in power. Certainly there's a major Western responsibility to do what we can even if the options are limited. And what advice therefore not only would you give us in terms of learning the lessons from the past, but how we can at least do some good uh, to help the Afghan people in humanitarian area, in civil society, in uh, protecting the rights of women and women's education in the future. We may not have many levers, but if we have some, we at least need to use them uh, well. Uh, so Zarifa, thank you uh, for being with us today. Um, and I'm going to now pass you the microphone, but as I switch on your microphone, I'd like you, if you would, in your you know, introductory comments to tell us, you know, uh, for, you need, need it for like absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what, from your perspective, what did Western diplomacy do wrong over the last 20 years? You know, were there turning points where, if a different road had been taken, we could have had a, a better outcome? How did you experience, uh, from your perspective, sitting in your town hall, in your office as mayor, how did you perceive the international effort at, 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 at the time? And then, secondly, if you could transition and tell us, you know, again, what kind of diplomacy do we now need uh, to at least be helpful where we can uh, to the people of Afghanistan? And then we'll transition a little bit to your present and future role uh, as a, an Afghan representative in exile, if I can use that term, and how you could see the sort of role that you can play. Uh, but um, thanks for being here today, and uh, we're all very eager to listen to you. And I will shut up so that you could do precisely that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your nice words and all supportive insights and the love and support I received since last, since yesterday and I'm receiving as always. Uh, it's so nice and thank you so much for having me here. Actually, the when it comes to diplomacy mystic, diplomatic mystics of international community, there are a big list of that in, in the in a perspective of Afghan people for us because we born there, we lived there, and we we were so familiar to the place, and we knew all about the good and bad points. We knew about what could change situation, and uh, at the end till the fall of Kabul, uh, with the negotiation with Taliban, and all the processes. Uh, one of the major, few of the major, like one or two points, it was, first it was bringing back these warlords and murderers of Afghan people to the rule in 2001 by the Bonn Conference. When, after the Bonn Conference, we had an amount of people coming to Afghanistan and ruling them. And they were still, they are still uh, everywhere. Like there are, there are near about 100 people, men and, men and women. They are on the screen in every field. If you want to meet an, a politician, le woman leader, they are the same pictures from the Bonn conference. If you want to, like businessman, everyone, like they were all in one person all this long time. 
And most importantly, it was giving them power, bringing these warlords from the top of the mountains and giving them suits, ties, so branded shoes and watch and a big amount of money and power. So Afghan government inside internally, it was not so much busy with international crisis and uh, tourism, which was one of them, Taliban, and at the end, some of these problems around the country, which were busy with these criminals inside because of their uh, their stuffs that they were making it inside the country. Uh, secondly, uh, it was about not walking in country sites of Afghanistan. With a, if, you, if you search Afghanistan and if you search for pictures and photos or videos or news from Afghanistan on Google, you will just find all pictures from these big cities, big beautiful provinces. Mazar, Herat, Bamiyan, Kabul, Jalalabad, Badakhshan, these two big cities and the most which were like green and clean and like kind of, it was, we, they were, everyone were able to create a poster from them. So, uh, but importantly, in the, with the entrance of international community by 2001, uh, when they wanted to pull out Taliban. They pulled out Taliban from cities to countrysides, not out of Afghanistan. They lived in countrysides, they, they functioned there, and they just grew up stronger than ever there in countrysides. And government also was busy with Afghan government with these busy big cities, making publicities on social media and TVs, bringing this uh, topics just on a screen. So people who were living in, in countrysides, they were like a cell so far from this developments in city. These, the concrete problems of two days Afghanistan or the conflict that happens today in Afghanistan, it was this. Because I know those people, I have met my myself personally, those people that they were living in countryside and they taught those women who were in, in, in cities and they are having their rights, going to school, universities, working, being part of politics and everything. They are not Muslims. That's why international community is going to help them. And those women who are in countryside, they are so Muslim, that's why they are not receiving this amount. And these ideas were given to them, given to them by these extremist people, specifically with the Taliban and all. So two basic problems and two basic biggest mistakes uh, with the case of diplomacy, it was these two that we, at least and at the end of negotiation with the Taliban also, uh, we Afghan people and Afghan government, unfortunately, we have been putting aside of negotiation directly with Taliban. And before having a deal, our, like by us, international community, which is like uh, US having this deal and everything changed. So not putting Afghan people in the middle of topic, it was the biggest problem, and if, if they were making it, they were bringing up one people, those warlords, or those warlords on so, the screen. So three lessons, three lessons for diplomacy, which certainly resonate with me. You're putting too much of the ancien regime back, when I suppose people were expecting some transition to a, a new future. Uh, neglecting the needs of the countryside, not having a sort of a Afghan population-centric uh, approach, and then finally thinking that because the Taliban were out of power, they were out of existence, and not having some sort of policy to engage or to deal with them or to bring them in uh, afterwards. Uh, how about what you want diplomacy to do now? I mean, if you're going around, as I imagine, you'll be invited by foreign ministries in EU countries to come and talk to them, to advise them, and so on. What sort of, what are you going to tell them that they should do now? Uh, three clear messages that I'm carrying it out all my way. Uh, it, first, it's about, uh, human, uh, it's about humanitarian aid for human of Afghanistan. And if I... If we say humanitarian aid, we request not to do it through government of Taliban. Please go for this through this 
international organizations which are already busy with these cases in Afghanistan since 20 years, and they know how to work at, at least, uh, as well with the control of Taliban in area. Secondly, it's about the about the, the root and the tail of this conflict of Afghanistan, which is back to Pakistan, and which comes back to Pakistan, and pressurizing ISI and Pakistani government to, with every expect, with the every source that international community can make it, to not interfere in Afghanistan and to break their ties with the Taliban. And through this, pressurize Taliban for the, for uh, if they, still want to stay there, and at least they want international recognition to guarantee human and women, in particular women rights. So these all are like clear topics, and specifically one of their last, it's about please after this not to focus on the city. It's because it's so clear in terms of city building, um, there, there is people from countryside who are building cities. And there are people from countrysides who are able to destroy the city. So if really we want to bring changes back to ground, we need to work on these people who are in countrysides, those who have been not part of all the, the glory lives and in, in, in cities. Uh, so at least we can we can see changes. Thank you. Uh, again, three very clear messages: a through rep reputable, effective international organisations. Obviously, you try to have some leverage over the local actors who are filling the vacuum. And you could argue that Pakistan always filled that vacuum to some extent. Left behind uh, when uh, the Western countries have withdrawn. And then finally, again, this idea of you know trying to focus on the country, so where I imagine the bulk of the population live. Final question from me before we go to you, dear audience, and also to Joe, who is my co-moderator and who is looking at the virtual traffic uh, online, uh, on the chat and so on. Final question from me. Now, this is a, 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 an unfair question because obviously you've only been here for a couple of months. Uh, obviously difficult. I imagine you couldn't leave with many suitcases and you have to uh, take care of your family in a new life. But, 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 you are obviously a, a, an, act, an actor, an activist. You have a reputation, a profile. I've seen you on the BBC. Delighted, therefore, to meet you in person. But um, you must have been thinking a little bit, you know, what can I do now in terms of continuing to be an actor, to be a player, to have influence? Uh, how, how do you sort of conceive of the role that you can play? What kind of network do you need to, to have, a, if you like, your own diplomacy? With whom, governments, NGOs, would you feel that you can best collaborate? How, how do you see your ability to still you know, look after your city, even from 10,000 miles distance? Actually, uh, to answer this question, I will start from the last point that whom I'm looking to walk off with. Please, I need more humans. Doesn't matter who they are, where they are, and how they are. I, but if they are human, it's enough for us, for Afghan people, to, to have to walk with them. And secondly, for a long time, uh, to, I really request and I really wish international community as well, people of Afghanistan are those leaders who have been part of 20 years governance in Afghanistan to at least not repeat the same mistakes of 20 years once again in Afghanistan. Uh, and secondly, it's about to walk up uh, on humanitarian organizations, humanitarian aids, women rights. Uh, it's uh, today morning. I had a news uh, from Kabul on Twitter, and I, it was about there are so many children dying because of lack of food, just because of lack of food. So they are not receiving enough food to eat, so they are dying. So let's. I, uh, while it's, it's a session on diplomacy and politics, I request everyone in case of Afghanistan, at least for now, in a specific situation, let's put politics aside, let's try to be human, let's try to help human and humanitarian aids without to keeping this political context in account. So this would at least help women of Afghanistan. And in case of women, we really need to work on educational and uh, 
professional trainings to women in countryside and uh, I have been working on a proposal for a project on this and I have been talking to my friends back in Afghanistan, to my family members and try to find a specific area to run that and then uh, uh, after organizing everything I had this proposal and right now I'm trying to find a specific platform to fund that to uh, to develop, uh, deliver uh, tuitions or courses for primary and secondary education for women in countryside, as well these uh, trainings of professional trainings on some parts uh, and some activities that women are not able, like w in case of women empowerment, we don't need to bring all women out of home. We can provide them facilities inside their houses so they can live the way that they love it. So these are all the long, long term projects and then topics and ideas that I have it for now. But uh, for now, it's more about being the voice of my people, yep. uh, representing well, you, them all over the well, you're world. Playing, you're playing that role very well here. It's, it's I hope so. I also hope that. Uh, Obviously, being here at our Friends of Europe, uh, State of Europe uh, annual conference with all of the people here, hopefully, what I said about networks earlier on, hopefully there's a good network uh, for you here too, particularly in terms of uh, projects. Uh, I make that appeal on your behalf, if you would allow me to, uh, to, do, to do so. Uh, we now come to the, uh, the question period. Before I turn to Joe, who's going to look at what's coming in, I wanted to give you, the direct audience, a chance to uh, ask her questions. Unfortunately, we are under under the dictatorship of the clock. Uh, so maybe I could take uh, two or three very quick questions here, turn back to Zarifa to answer those, and then we'll move over to Joe uh, to see what he's picking up on the traffic. Who would like to uh, in intervene, please? Yes, please, of course. Microphone to you. Thank you. Um, Zarifa, as I said to you yesterday, um, thank you for being with us, and you're a role model for women. Um, people everywhere, but for women um, around the world. Just a question, um, you know, under um, uh, Obama and at the time of Milan Bavir, you know the US had a, an explicitly feminist foreign policy and was investing heavily in women's empowerment in Afghanistan. Um, where you are today, would you say you've lost faith in feminist foreign policy? Or what would your advice be to to us here today in terms of um, encouraging our governments to embrace uh, feminist foreign policies. Thank you for that. Uh, I, I, it, because I think we can sit this in the time we have remaining, as I said, I'll take three questions. Uh, sorry, Therese, but it means you have to note them down uh, because I always forget them. Uh, so, gentlemen there, please. Yep, I can hear you. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, yes, sir. Sorry about that. You can all hear me now. Yes, as you see this today. Uh, I just want to once again say, um, after your talk last night and today, it's an enormous privilege um, to hear the contribution you've to make, you're, you're making to all of us here. Um, I myself, I'm one of the youngest parliamentarians in Europe. I was 22 when I was elected last year, 24 now. I think the experience that you've had and what you've gone through <coughs> is a testament for you to be here with all of us to share your experience. And it, my, my, I don't so much have a question, but I have a point I'd love to make. I think it's so important that you go around and travel around Europe to tell each of the member states about your experience and how wonderfully welcome you would be uh, in Ireland if you get the chance to come and visit our country. Um, and I think that's such an important uh, point I want to make for, for young, young people, uh, for younger women and girls who may want to go into politics. You know, it's, 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 it, I think it's, it's, it's very, very important for younger people to hear direct experiences uh, from people involved. And um, just to say in terms of solidarity from, from, from our position in Ireland to, to the people of Afghanistan, it's been an enormously difficult period for you all and the future ahead as well looks very uncertain. And, you know, from my point of view as a parliamentarian, I think we need to do everything we possibly can in the European Union to strengthen our ties with people who've uh, who've successfully settled here in the EU. So I'll just thank you once again. Thank you very much. So uh, you have an invitation to visit uh, Ireland. And, and that comes with a strong thank recommendation. Thank you so much. Pleasure. I would love to join thank you. Thank you. And then uh, I've got uh, from the yes, uh, lady there, please. Uh, that will be the last then for this round. And then you give you the floor again. Hi. Um, 
I am Francesca Cavallo. Uh, I'm a publisher and a book author. Uh, my question for you is, uh, are you uh, building a network with other uh, Afghani refugees to sort of influence, um, you know, foreign, foreign politicians on what, what they can do, what diplomacy can do? And if you are, is there a way uh, we can help also those of us who are not politicians but who are members of the civil society to maybe inspire youth activi uh, young activists in our own countries to help out? Sorry for those two questions there. Uh, they're great questions, but I have to ask you to give very brief answers so that we've still got a couple just, of minutes to bring just, in Joe. Go uh, ahead. Answer both questions with two, 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 two sentences. Uh, first, about the foreign policy in terms of women, empowerment. The only thing I will suggest uh, is uh, in Afghanistan, uh, when they were bringing these women empowerment projects, they were giving it to this one skilled woman who have been coming to Afghanistan from Bonn Conference. And that project was, if it was about human rights, uh, informations like awareness, they were bringing all together the ladies from universities, from schools, sitting, pick, like making a conference hall for them and giving a conference to them. Uh, but yeah, those who were in the school and university, they already knew about their rights. It was important to have the same in countryside. So I think this example could help you in terms of uh, what we need to change. We need to particularly work on the base, not in the, from the root of the problems to help, to help exactly what we want. And secondly, about the building of a network with refugees. Those refugees who are out of Afghanistan right now, they are at least safe. They know that they were not being killed and Taliban won't kill them. But it's, it's more important for now to focus on those who have been sold in Afghanistan, uh, the, the human rights and women rights activists, uh, social activists, media, uh, m military women, uh, and government uh, officers. These all, I think that's more important. That's why I'm all focused on that. Not not much about the refugees who are there uh, here. So I think those who are here, they are safe right now. We need to focus on that that's who are left. Yeah, message. Uh, focus on those who are still in a precarious yeah. uh, situation. Get the priorities right. Uh, that came across clearly. Joe, uh, what have we got uh, what, that you're seeing online? Bring in, um, first of all, we'll start with a video contribution from Anna Gomez, who's going to make a remark or, or ask a question. She's a former diplomat and MEP. Anna, can you hear us? I hope so. Anna, are you there? Are you out there? Yes, yes. I'm very pleased to hear ah. Zarifa and for our inspiring campaign for a country, for the women of a country, the women and the men. Uh, I, I heard her say that this is time for no politics in the approach to Afghanistan. But may I uh, um, ask her if indeed this is the right time for having politics on Afghanistan, the politics that are guided by values such as human rights and women rights and not exactly the kind of politics that prevailed in the last uh, years when um, diplomats and others were actually denying the reality, denying the reality that you've just told us and that we have seen. I had been to Afghanistan. I saw that indeed the criminal warlords were back, that nobody was talking, for instance, about their pedophile practices, that most of the people in jail were women escaping uh, uh, um, oppressive families and so on. Uh, and of course, the role of Pakistan. So isn't it the time for indeed politics with principles and values enabling the people and if that may even entail for instance some kind of dialogue or even some humanitarian assistance that goes through the taliban but with the purpose of helping escape the people who are in uh, in urgent uh, uh, need to uh, under danger and also enable the people in afghanistan who are resisting the rural people the women and so on 
so that they indeed resist and overthrow this regime. Thanks, Anna. For, for, as always, with you, a very clear and passionate message too. So politics continue, but it may be a different kind of politics. Joe, we continue before I give the final word to Zarifa. Together, we've got a few. Um, so another one from Ambassador Veronica Juan Danielson, who's former ambassador of Sweden to France and head of America's Department of the Swedish Ministry for Foreign Affairs. She says, beyond the humanitarian support that is badly needed now, what should be the main conditions or demands that the international community requests from the Taliban in order to consider some future basic support? Is it realistic to expect another position on women's rights from the Taliban? Um, we also have a question from Paul Taylor, who's a, a veteran European journalist and he's senior fellow at Friends of Europe. And he asks, uh, thanks for the inspiring talk. How do you see the role of Iran in Afghanistan? Uh, they have taken in large numbers of refugees over the years. Can Iran be a base for helping build a better Afghanistan? Or do you see them as negatively as Pakistan? Um, and then final question, if I may. Uh, yeah, Joe, I think we've just got. Okay, let's, let's, go, let's stick with that. I, th I think we'll have to, okay. otherwise uh, we are going to overrun. Uh, uh, but, and that's a lot of uh, flesh on the bone. So, Zarifa, we had this uh, notion of politics uh, in a different way. Go with this politics Demands one? and Iran. Yeah. Uh, with, when, I, when I say uh, not time for politics, and uh, it's just because I lost the faith on the politics that have been played in my country. I really lost. It's not only me, we Afghan people, we lost the politics fit on the politics that have been run in my country. And yeah, definitely, if anyone could be the same way, like providing humanitarian politics, procedures, diplomacy in my country, most welcome, why not? Uh, secondly, about uh, the uh, rule of, uh, I think it was about the rule of Iran, uh, with this question, uh, we Afghan people, we nowadays, at least in 2021, we know our enemies and our friends so well. So uh, if my home is safe, I'm not ha I don't have to leave my home and my house and my country and my everything. Being a refugee is the worst part of life that everyone can experience it. And as well, in particular, being a refugee in Iran and Pakistan, where you have to go through too many difficulties around. So definitely, uh, if they have been uh, giving place to refugees and supporting and having the refugees. It's not just because they do it for free. They are receiving amounts of dollars for these refugees who who was this, this was the, the, one of the reasons yeah. of their uh, leaving their houses. And uh, one quest, one, another one was about... Uh, the demands on the Taliban. What demands yeah. should the international community make of the Taliban? And is, is there any sort of hope that big, leap, big pressure could get them to uh, recognize women's rights more, women in government, uh, girls in school? Uh, you know, are there ways you think that... Uh, strict conditions could change their behavior. So clearly, two points. First, when, I, when we started pressurizing Pakistan and ISI, we can pressurize Taliban directly with themselves. Like, it's so clear, and it can help realities to walk on ground. Secondly, it's about what demands we need to put to international community to pressurize Taliban with. It's just humanitarian rights, in particular women rights. Uh, it's so easy, it's so normal. If the war and the sources are so easy, putting uh, uh, political pressures uh, on about not giving them recognition, legitimation. So these all are the, the sources that we can work on that. And uh, uh, but yeah, not recognizing Taliban doesn't mean that they need to stop humanitarian aid uh, because humanity is humanity and politics is politics, and they can they are so different topics. Right, Zarifa, I'm uh, very grateful. I wish we had more time because you're passionate and elegant and you've got so many things to say. Uh, but unfortunately, we're under the dictatorship of the clock. But uh, you delivered some very clear messages. Where is this clock? We are so democratic the people. The clock is, is what people are telling me in my earpiece. Uh, uh, but, uh, but no, the messages, I think, are clear. Uh, 
we have to have policies and messages that are adapted to the current Afghan reality, not the past. We need to look at the humanitarian situation and prioritize the needs of Afghans living in precarious conditions inside the country. Uh, and thirdly, we can develop a program to help Afghan women, Afghan women at home. It's likely to be more successful if it's adapted to the local conditions. So those are at least the three big takeaways that I take from what you said. We wish you good fortune, good luck, safe journey back to Dusseldorf later on. Uh, we'll look with great interest uh, at how you fare uh, with your projects. We wish you luck with them. Uh, you are a friend of Friends of Europe. Uh, and which means that you are welcome back and will be invited back to update us on your progress uh, as we go forward. But thanks for being here today. We wish you well. Good luck. Uh, and uh, I think you've made it clear, or we've made it clear to you, that we see you as a role model. So continue to be a role model. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Eva One. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, in the program it was indicated break, uh, but I think uh, that the break has just been broken, uh, and uh, if I've got it right, you are now invited to go back upstairs. 